Communication is a big buzzword these days. People talk about communication in relationships. Yep, very important, very important. At work, communication can be taken to extremes. What, you didn't read that email the boss sent at midnight? There are a lot of people in technologies that are part of the too much or not enough communications blame game. Of course, the biggest defender is responsible for setting the tone because so much of our communication begins with the phone. Long before these, we had many versions of these. Kids, before you could press your finger on a screen and make a call or research a paper, we used to have to dial from a device connected to a wall with wires and everything. To chronicle the story of the telephone, we have to start back in the 19th century. 1876 was a really big year in telephone history. That was the year that the patent was filed. It was the race for the patent between Alexander Graham Bell and Elijah Gray. Bell ultimately gets the patent, and that's where things sort of really kick off. The Henry Ford's communications curator, Kristen Gallerno, gave me the 411 on all things telephones. Anyone who's seen an old movie, a black and white movie, <laughs> has probably seen a switchboard. Yes, exactly. And you can essentially send multiple messages over the same wire, and these switchboards essentially act as hubs. So what did these switchboard operators do? So the typical rundown of how it would work is if you were a telephone subscriber or caller, you would pick up the phone on your end, and the operator would come on, and she would say, number please. You didn't have to dial. You didn't dial. She just came on your line, and then you would give her the switchboard exchange or the number, and then she would patch you through. These start to look a lot more recognizable. Yes. We have a really impressive lineage of telephones, and so I've made a selection of some of my favorites. Which is the earliest one here? So this is actually the earliest. This is a automatic telephone designed by Ullman Stroger. As the story goes, Stroger was an undertaker who got sick of his business being bypassed by the local switchboard operator, who just happened to be the wife of a competing undertaker. So he designed the automatic telephone exchange, bypassing the need for an operator. Decades later... So what comes next is this telephone, and this is called an Eiffel Tower phone. It's really beautiful. It's like a skeleton. Everything is exposed. In the 1930s, industrial designer Henry Dreyfus created this classic 300 series phone with an internal ring box. Dreyfus's studio also created the Princess phone. Users could choose their color. Here it is in classic pink. In this phone, when yeah. does this phone become a big deal? This is a phone from the 1990s called the Unisonic, and it's, it's very iconic. It's around in the 1980s, too, but it, it's like clear plastic. You can see all the mechanisms inside. It doesn't necessarily help you understand them any better, but it looks really cool. Novelty and business-focused phones took root in the 1960s and 70s. But as we all know, the smartphone eventually overtook communication as we know it. I mean, it's amazing. No one talks on the phone anymore. It's true. We've actually, ironically, gone back to basically the telegraph. We communicate through texts and through emails, and we don't answer our phones anymore. Circular, <laughs> like a rotary. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Amazing, right? Yeah.